Greetings, everyone. My name is Nathaniel. I work under the geospatial team here at Trimble. And in today's video, I will give you a breakdown of the DA2 GNSS receiver, or also called the QRS GNSS receiver. So let's hop right into it. Before we begin the video, I would like to first give a quick little breakdown of the DA2 GNSS receiver simple design. So as you can tell, this model of this GNSS receiver does not include an internal battery or a cold swappable battery inside of it. Thus, to power on this receiver, it does require external power. Now with this kit, you will receive a portable battery. This portable battery comes with a little strap model is very simple to use. If you wish to adjust the strap or remove them, you simply pull, and just like that, you have your straps removed. So, to power on the GNSS receiver, it is quite straightforward. And as you take the cable of the DA2 and plug it inside of it, you will then be able to power it on. It is quite simple. There is a little button at the back of it, and as you click on it for a second or less, you will then see it flashing blue. When it is flashing blue, it simply means that the device is ready to be paired to a mobile device. And afterwards, to simply shut it off, all you do is you simply hold it for three seconds or less. And just like that, the DA2 has turned off. Now, there is one important design that I would like to point out in regards to the DA2, which I have personal experience, is sometimes this cable can come loose or throughout the age of the device, this cable may come loose. There is a simple screw inside of it. All you have to do is you unscrew the screw, and afterwards you will then be able to access the cable that plugs directly into DA2. So if that ever comes out loose and you are trying to power on and the device is simply not powering on, this may be one of the problems they're encountering. So simply keep that in mind. If it's come loose, take this off and plug it back into the DA2, and afterwards you'll be ready to rock and roll. Now, let us say you had a long day out in the field and your portable battery is completely drained. This can simply be charged like any other form of portable batteries out on the market. Now for this specific model, it uses a micro B charging cable. So it's quite straightforward. You simply plug it inside of the device and like any other form of electronics, you will then take this and unplug it into a wall outlet. Now that you understand the basic functions of the DA2, I will now show you how to install or update the firmware on this GNSS receiver. To update or install the DA2 firmware, you'll want to use the Mobile Manager application from Trimble. If this app is not already installed, please download it from the store. From there, you'll then be able to select your device, which in our case is the Trimble DA2. Now ensure that your device is turned on, and from there you'll then be able to connect to it. Once your Trimble DA2 is connected, you'll then go over onto the status page. From there, if there is a firmware available, it'll then prompt you to update to it. Now in our case, as you can see, our firmware version is up to date. So this is how you update or install the DA2 firmware. Now that you understand how to update or install the firmware of the DA2, let me show you now how to assemble the DA2 into a rover setup mode. So it is quite straightforward. You will have a two-piece carbon fiber GNSS rod. Now, I personally always like to take the top piece which is the one with the level bubble. And afterwards, you will want to mount the DA2 on top of it. Now, for the sake of this video, I have a regular two-piece GNSS carbon fiber rod. However, with your model, you may have a two-piece aluminum flat top. What this means is the top portion of the GNSS rod would simply be flat. Now, do keep in mind if you have this model and you are measuring the height of the device from the bottom portion to the top of the GNSS rod, the total length will be 1.975 meters. Now, for our model, we'll be using this 2M threaded adapter. This simply screws on the top piece of the GNSS carbon fiber pole. And just like that, this will allow us to take our DA2 and slide right on top of it. And just like that, our DA2 is installed on the top piece of our carbon fiber GNSS rod. The next portion of it will obviously be to attach the portable battery so that we can power the DA2. It is quite straightforward. Like the way that you would have had mounted the portable battery on this bracket will be the same way as how you will be mounting this onto the GNSS receiver. So you simply bring it right next to it, at the top of it. You will then take the straps, wrap those around. Once you have it wrapped around, 
you'll then be able to strap it onto it. And afterwards, you'll take your other piece and do the same. And just like that, your portable battery is now attached to your carbon fiber GNSS rod. All there is left to do is now take the cable, plug it inside of the portable battery. And just like that, your whole top portion of your GNSS rod is ready to get going. All there is missing now is to then screw it onto your bottom piece. And now your wherever setup is ready to get going. All you're missing now is a data collector. Now for this video, I am personally using a TDC 6000. However though, you may be using a TDC 6 or you could also use a T10 tablet. It all depends as to what you wish to use. Now, if you have this two-piece carbon fiber GNSS rod, there is a dedicated clamp zone. This is where you'll be able to clamp your mounting bracket for your device. Now you want to make sure that it is in the zone of the clamp zone. Afterwards, all there is left to do is to then screw the device so that it clamps onto the GNSS carbon fiber pole. Now I will give you one piece of advice. As you do so, you want to make sure that this portion is also aligned with the level bubble of the GNSS rod. As you'll be out collecting data, you'll have to ensure that your rod is level. And at the same time, you'll have to look at the screen. So it's simply convenient to have them both in the same direction facing towards you. All there is left now is to then take your metal mount bracket, which will clip onto this. Now there is a small little button right at the bottom of it. All you do is you push on it. This will allow the metal piece of this bracket to then be able to be inserted inside of it. And just like that, your bracket is now inserted. You can also verify to make sure that it is sitting flush to ensure that it's properly mounted. Once you have so, you will then take your data collector device and you will then clamp it on. And just like that, your whole setup is ready to rock and roll. Now, as previously mentioned, if you are using the yellow 2M threaded adapter for this two-piece carbon fiber GNSS rod, the height would be two meters. However, if you're using the two-piece flat top GNSS rod, the actual height of the pole would be 1.975 meters. Now, personally, I always recommend you to use a measuring tape and verify so. To verify so, you would simply take the height from the metal tip at the bottom of this pole all the way up to the little black portion of your DA2. So for example, if I'm measuring from the bottom and this would be at the bottom, I come all the way up to the top at this little portion here, right underneath that black mounting bracket of the DA2. As mentioned, it's always good practice to do so to ensure that the height of your rod is properly measured, since if it is not properly measured, this may skew your data that you'll be collecting out in the field. With the DA2 now ready to collect some data out in the field, before we do so, we need to install the Forensic Capture software. So let me show you how to do that. To install the Forensic Capture software, you'll first want to open up the Trimble Installation Manager. If you do not already have this application, please ensure to download it from the App Store. When you first open it up, it'll ensure that Trimble Installation Manager is up to date and get a list of available products that is available for your account. In our case, we have the Forensic Capture software, which you can then select. From there, you'll then be able to activate your license by clicking the install button at the bottom. Once your license is active, it'll then download the Capture Forensic software. Once this download is completed, it'll prompt you if you want to install this application. From there, you'll click the install button and Forensic Capture will then install onto your personal device. Once the app is installed, you'll then be able to open it onto your mobile device. So as you can see in our case, it now pops up onto our home screen. From there, you then open up the Capture Forensic software. And you simply give it a few seconds. Now, when you first open up the Trimble Forensic Capture, I'll ask you a couple of permission to have some access to your device. For example, the file, location, camera, and etc. So just make sure to accept all of these. That way, the application is able to behave as it should. Afterwards, the application will then check for your license, which from there, it will then prompt you to log into your Trimble account. Once you are logged in, it will then validate your license to ensure that you do have an active license. Now, for the sake of this video, we'll skip this portion for privacy reasons. However, though, all you have to do is log into your account. Once you are logged in, you'll then be prompted back onto the application, which will then verify the license. It will ask you to enter a couple of settings for your Capture Forensic software, so please make sure to select those properly. Afterwards, you'll then have to read the terms and conditions. 
Now for the sake of this video, I will simply scroll throughout real fast, but please do take a second to read through this. Once you are done, you then clicked at the bottom that you accept and finish. And just like that, you're ready to use the Capture Forensic software. With the Forensic Capture software now installed, we're ready to go out in the field. But before we go out in the field, I'd like to give a little bit of context as to how this GNSS receiver will be receiving correction. Now, if you are using our auto model that we do provide, which is called the R780-2LE, that configuration can be set up as a base slash rover setup. However, this unit cannot do so. Instead, the DE2 will be using the NTRIP slash TCH receive corrections from a base, or it will also use RTX, which utilizes satellites to receive corrections. Now, without waiting, let's go out in the field so I can show you how to set that up. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is obviously open the capture software. Now, if this is your first time opening the capture software, it may prompt you to log into your Trimble account. Make sure that you're logged into the proper email and that you have an active license for capture. Once that you're logged in, you'll be greeted with the splash screen. So we'll first begin and create a new project. Now, for the sake of this video, we are simply going to call it test. Now, if you were out and you were actually out taking some true measurements, you could then select the point code library, which comes with three default ones. Additionally, you can also make your own custom one that you can add into the software. For the sake of the context of this video, we're simply going to select none. And I will move on to the next screen. So make sure the input method is selected as GNSS, as this is a GNSS survey. Now, this for the GNSS configuration, this is where you'll change it. So we'll click onto the blue change button. GNSS style, we'll select the first one being the entry. Now I will point out with this GNSS receiver, you cannot do a base slash rover configuration. So do keep that in mind. So let's select entry. And afterwards for our rover Bluetooth, we'll ensure to select the proper one, which in this case it is the DA2. And once that your device is properly selected, this is where we'll set up the entry server. Now, if you don't already have it configured, this is where you'll click the blue button, which is new, and afterwards you'll then, you'll then be able to connect to the entry server. So we're able to insert a name in regards to it, and then afterwards you insert the address, port, username, password, then you'll download the entry table, and afterwards from there it'll select the closest server. And once you have all this information configured, you'll then click the test configuration. And that way, you'll be able to ensure that everything's working properly. Now, for the sake of this video, I already have one selected, so we're going to select that one. We'll exit out of the screen, and from the drop-down menu, we'll select the one called Test. And this is where we can click Test Configuration. So, it'll first connect to the DA2, and once it's connected to the DA2, it'll test out the connection. Now, one thing to keep in mind is with the NCHIP slash GCH server, you need some form of hotspot or cell and network on the, on the data collector that you're using. So ensure that you have that. Now for the rover position, this is where you want to keep an eye out. On the position type, we'll give it a few seconds and afterwards it'll then switch over to RTK. Once it's switched over to RTK, you know that you're getting some proper corrections to your GNSS receiver. So we'll exit out of the screen. And just like that, your NCHIP is ready to rock and roll. So we'll check the blue check mark at the top and select next. All right, now these settings are very important for the rover target settings. For the target height, we know that this two-piece GNSS carbon fiber pole is two meters long. Now, as previously mentioned, inside, if you're using the 2M threaded adapter at the top, this simply means that the reference point would be at the flat point of the DA2. However, though, if you had the flat top two-piece GNSS aluminum pole, then this would slip on top of it, which would result in a 1.975 meter height measurement. And if at any point you're ever inserted, just grab a measuring tape and measure the pole to the height reference point of this DA2. Now for the context of the survey, I know that it's two meters and ensure that the measure two is at the bottom of the antenna mount. Now that we're ready, we're going to set up our three points. So our initial point, we're going to set up at this center point of this basketball court and we'll then take our measurement. As you're taking your measurement, ensure that your two-piece GNSS carbon fiber pole is plumb with the level bubble and hold it steady for 10 seconds. Awesome. Just like that, you have your first measurement completed. Now, in the context that if you wanted to select a point that already exists, you could already pre-enter the coordinate systems that you would have, so your X, Y, and Z. However, though, for this context of the survey, we'll use this reference point as 0, 0, 0. Next up, we'll set up our first GNSS control point, which for the context of the survey, we're just going to pick this corner on this basketball court. And we'll take our measurement again and hold it steady for 10 seconds. 
And just like that, you have your first GNSS control point completed, which then you'll click next and set up your second point. And for the context of the survey, we'll just select the opposite corner of this basketball court and we'll take your measurement and again, hold it steady for 10 seconds. Awesome, you now have your second GNSS control point completed. And just like that, you'll now be ready to rock and roll. And afterwards you click the top right check mark and afterwards we'll bring it to the main splash page of the capture software. And we'll give it a couple of seconds as it's opening the new scene. Awesome, and as you can see, your capture software is now ready to rock and roll and go out and collect some measurements. So now I'll show you the second method to set up this GNSS receiver, which is going to utilize the RTX satellites. All right, so let's configure the capture software to utilize the RTX configuration. So we're back at the main page of our, of our capture software. So we'll create a new project. Yet again, we'll title it test. And for the point code library, we'll select none. However though, if you know which one you would like to utilize, then you can pre-select it from there. So we'll click on to next. Now ensure that your input method is GNSS. And then for your GNSS configuration, this is where we'll change it over to RTX. So by clicking the blue change button, I'll show you the splash menu again. So for our GNSS style, we're going to select RTX. Ensure that you have the proper rover selected, which this one is RTA2, which is correct. And this is where we'll go and test our configuration. So we'll first connect to our rover, which is RTA2. And just like that, it is going to test our configuration. Now, same thing as earlier, it might take a couple of seconds for the position type to switch to RTX. However though, as you can see, it's having proper horizontal and vertical precision point. Now, do keep in mind with the RTX network, your precision might be a little bit lower than the mtrip slash TCH server. So just keep that in mind whenever you're out collecting some data. So let's exit out of this menu. And once we are happy with our GNSS configuration, we'll click the blue check mark at the top right. And afterwards, we'll select next. Now, yet again, ensure that you're selecting the proper target height, which for the sake of this context, I already know that this two piece carbon fiber GNSS pole is two meters long. Now, as mentioned, if you had the flat top with the uh, two piece aluminum pole, which then you'll end up with a 1.975 meter rod height. Now, for the sake of this context of the survey, I already know that this is two meter and ensure that it is measured to bottom of the antenna mount. So we'll click next and we'll do the same setup where we do our three points as earlier. Now your first point could be used as mentioned as earlier as your base setup if you're ever doing a base slash rover setup. And once we have that 10 second countdown completed, this will store our first point. As mentioned earlier, if you already had some coordinates for that first point, this is where you would go and then insert it in it. And yet again, for this context of the survey, we'll simply take the other corner of this basketball court and make sure to hold your rod still for 10 seconds by using the level bubble. Awesome, and just like that, you have your first GNSS control point completed. So we'll now move on to our second GNSS control point, which for the context of this video, we'll simply take the other corner. Yet again, you want to ensure to hold your rod still for 10 seconds. And once that 10 second countdown is completed, the point will be stored. Awesome. Now your second GNSS control point is now stored, so we'll click next. And just like that, you are now ready to rock and roll. So let's click that check mark at the top right. And just like that, you're ready to go out and collect some measurements. So this is how you set up the DA2 for your two GNSS configuration, being the nship slash TCH server, and at last the RTX method. So let's go back inside for the conclusion of this video. Now that you understand how to use the DA2, this wraps up today's video. We would like to first thank you for buying our Chimble product to utilize it for your work. We sincerely hope that by using our product, it ensures that your work can be faster, efficient, and most importantly, as safe as possible. Now, should you ever have any questions in regards to your product, please don't hesitate to contact the Trimble Forensics Supports team. You can contact them at the following email, forensics underscore support at trimble.com. And on that note, thank you kindly for using your product and thanks for watching. Have a lovely day.